Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. My name is Eric Burnskill, and in this tutorial, I want to walk you through how to configure and install W3 Total Cache on your WordPress site. Now, we all know that performance and site speed is very important, and that is for a number of reasons. And one of the ways to quickly speed up your site is by installing W3 Total Cache, or I should say install any type of cache, configure it, which means you're saving a lot of, of queries when you're loading your site. So W3 Total Cache is one of the most popular caching plugins that are available out there. And it is very powerful because it supports a lot of different caching methods. It supports minification. It also supports integration within a, a CDN, a content delivery network, and some other things. So it's one of my favorite plugins to use when caching and speeding up a site. So I'm going to go to, to the plugin section. I'm going to install W3. I'm going to search for W3. And I'm going to click install now to W3 total cache. It's going to download from the WordPress repository. And I'm going to activate it. So with it activated, now we're in a demo site here, so there's not a ton to cache. We are going to go to the performance section, which is where we have our W3 total cache. So under the general section, what you have is a, a long list of basically enable disable checkboxes and some basic settings for each. So W3 total cache supports, as I said, a number of different caching methods. We've got a page cache, we've got minification, database cache, object cache, browser cache. Uh, and then a few other things that we're not going to cover in this video. By default, the plugin enables itself with what's called a preview mode, which means we can do any configuration here, but it's not going to uh, be active on our site until we click the deploy button right here. Once we click the deploy button, the changes and the caching is going to go live on our site. And this is a very nice way of configuring and then again, deploying when we're ready. So what I'm going to start with is going through all of the different sections and settings up here, starting with the page cache. We're going to come back to the general section and enable everything at the end. So starting with the page cache, this is what basically does most of the difference, this and minification. Page cache is caching all of the different pages on your site so that they can be loaded quickly without having to do as many queries each time as otherwise. And it's typically a good idea to enable most of the settings here. So we're definitely going to want to cache feeds as well, because uh, th these caches are going to clear and be cleared, as we're going to see later when we publish a new post. So we definitely want to clear or cache the feeds. And should we use HTTPS, uh, we definitely want to check to cache HTTPS requests as well. Uh, and we want to leave all of the default settings on, but uh, please note that this cache 404 not found pages should not be turned on because what's in fact going to happen is it's going to generate uh, or return what's called a 200 response code, which means it's going to tell the browser that this is in fact a page that is okay instead of the default 404, which is not found. So we want to leave that turned off. Otherwise, the default should be turned on and we're going to keep scrolling down. So this is where you can do a little bit of, of configuration that is site specific to yourself. Uh, the garbage collection interval is basically saying how frequently should we remove expired cache data. So if, if you if you have a site that is updated a lot, you want to lower. Uh, but for most of you, the default setting is going to work just fine. If you have some user agents you don't want to cache forever, you can enter them in here. Um, as well, if you have some cookies that just cannot be cached, you can enter the cookie names here, which means that if a page uses this cookie, uh, it is not going to be cached at all. By default, uh, there are a few pages within WordPress that should not be cached, uh, as well as some exceptions to the rules that we entered above. So again, the default setting should do you fine. Uh, under the preload section, 
you definitely want to turn on to automatically prime the page cache. What this means is typically a cache is only created when someone visits the given page. If you turn on the cache preload, what's going to happen is it's going to go through and make a cache for each page before someone visits it, meaning it's, we're going to reduce the time when first visitor comes to a page that's already going to be cached. So you can set how often uh, this should update and how many pages it's going to do per interval. Uh, what's also important is that you have a site map that will help the plugin. So you're going to need uh, either a Google XML sitemap generator plugin, I'd recommend the one by Yoast, um, or use Yoast's SEO plugin, which has a sitemap you uh, sitemap feature built into it. So you just want to enter the sitemap URL in here. Since I don't have a sitemap, I'm going to leave this turned off for this specific demo. But you definitely want to enter your URL to the sitemap and turn the preloading on. Once again, the default settings are going to do you fine. Uh, but you do want to specify pages and feeds that you want to purge, uh, delete the cache, that is, when you create uh, or edit a post. So typically that is your home page, post page, and blog feed. If you have a static home page, you definitely want to turn off the home page, for example. And perhaps there are some other pages that you uh, want to have flushed when you create or edit a new post. So I'm going to save this, and we are uh, a long way towards our new caching. So page cache is, as I said, going to do a whole lot to your site. Next up, we've got the minification. And this word, minification, basically means we're going to take all of the code and compress it down so that it doesn't contain all of the spaces and, and, and other characters that just take up place and make the files heavy to load. By default, when we code things, we include quite a lot of spaces and indentation in order to be friendly to the human eye, making it easy to read the code, view the code. But this comes at a price. A file with a lot of spaces and dents and spaces uh, is going to take up a lot of room and a lot of time to load. By minifying this, removing all of that, we're creating a, a less humanly pleasant file, but a file that is much quicker to load. Now, this is a section that you need to be aware when you turn on because on some servers that don't have enough memory or computing power what can happen here is that it does not have enough power to generate the minification serve it and, and do that properly you may also have plugins that aren't really made to work with this meaning they're going to fail if you turn on some of these settings for html and the ideal settings would be to turn on html minify turn on inline CSS and J JavaScript minification, and also the line break removal. This is going to get us the smallest file possible. Now, again, if you experience problems, you want to start by, for example, removing line break, removing inline, and just seeing what it is that helps. And then we can scroll down to JavaScript. And this is a section where you're just going to have it enabled. Uh, as it says, pretty much not safe with the line break removal, which means, hey, let's not use it. Under the CSS section, we have, uh, we can be a little tougher on the, the server, so we're going to enable it. We're also going to enable the preserved comment removal, which means we're going to remove all the CSS comments as much as possible, and also remove all of the line breaks. So we're going to create the smallest possible file. Uh, so at the end of that, we're going to save all of the settings. And hopefully, this is going to work well. What you can also do is enable a minify error notification, which means if for some reason this minify process fails, you can get notified in the admin panel, email, or both. I typically like to leave on the admin notification. Now, when you visit the site and, it, and the minify didn't work, you're going to see that. It's going to look like, for example, all of the style sheets just disappeared, or there are some JavaScript functions that won't work. In that case, you'll know that it's something to do with the minification that you just turned on.
When we move on to the database cache, object cache, and browser cache, this doesn't do as much as page cache and minification, but it's good to turn them on. In the, date ca in the case of the database cache, there's really no settings but the default ones uh, to mess with here. And the same is true for object cache. You just want to turn them on again in the general section, but you can leave the settings pages untouched. For browser caches, we would want to turn on the set expires header, the cache control header, and the entity tag uh, in addition to the default ones. And I typically like to turn on the do not process 404 errors for static objects with WordPress because I do think it is unnecessary. What this section means is normally if someone tries to access an image file in your template, for example, that doesn't exist, you'll get the standard 404 error page for your theme, which means it's loading WordPress, and that takes up a lot of server resources. Instead, I like just the default web server page to handle these for static files. So if someone tries to go to a post that you've written and it doesn't work, they will still get your custom WordPress 404 error. But if they go to say an image file, they will get the server default. I think it saves a lot on the server load and not really deters from the user experience. So I typically turn this one on as well. What you'll see next is that these settings are gonna pretty much repeat. Uh, for the different settings here. So we have a general and it's going to repeat for CSS, JavaScript, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. The only thing that you might want to change here is the expires lifetimes, which means in how many sections should we tell the browser to refresh its cache. Again, the default settings are going to do you fine, but you might want to experiment here depending on how often your site is changed. Now, the final thing that I want to highlight to you is under the CDN section. And if you have a CDN, uh, you are definitely going to want to use this. And, and if you have visitors coming from all of the all of the, around the world, using a CDN is going to reduce load time by serving files, static files, images, style sheets, JavaScript from a server that is as close as possible to the to the computer making the connection to your server. And these typically cost a little bit of money, uh, but are well worth it in, in the, the load time that you save. So in case you have one, you want to enable it here. And what you can do is under the general sections, if we if we go here and scroll down, we want to make sure page cache is enabled. We want to enable minification at the auto setting. The default page caching methods are fine. Page cache should be disk enhanced. If you have access to a dedicated or virtual server, you might want to look at one of the opcode extensions. Or if you have multiple servers, look at the memcached because memcached is definitely a really, really good caching method. Uh, again, keep scrolling down, enable the disk, leaving everything at the default, enable database cache, enable object cache, enable browser cache. And if you have a CDN, you can enable it. Uh, they have some uh, examples here. For example, I like NetDNA or Mac CDN. They've been, they work really nicely for me. Uh, Amazon has their own, Rackspace, uh, and different ones. So just pick one. Again, I'd recommend NetDNA because they've been good to me. Uh, and you can follow their guidelines on setting up their uh, CDN. What you can also do is if we scroll down, there's a section called Network Performance and Security Powered by Cloudflare. And Cloudflare is a free service that allows you to, to it, it will secure your site by blocking some uh, suspicious visitors from suspicious IP addresses. It will help cache your site and speed it up, uh, as well as using what's called sort of an any, um, any cast DNS system, trying to load the site quicker by routing visitors to, through the server path best from their location so that it, it gets your server quicker. So you can just sign up for free, enter the API key, set up the site on Cloudflare. Again, it's free for basic needs. Uh, basically, it's free until you need SSL support, and then it's pretty costly. Uh, 
but I would recommend you to check that out, enable it here, and uh, and again, after you've done that, you can save all of the settings here and click the deploy button, uh, which apparently is not working because I didn't set up my permalinks correctly. So let's click the deploy button again. Oh well. And for you, that would probably work, but since this is a demo and since I'm on a brand new demo install, uh, I haven't really configured everything around WordPress specifically. So just enable the checkboxes and the next time you load your site, do look at how much quicker it is. So you, you can do that by going to, for example, tools.pingdom.com. And so let's run a test here at Axel Studios. And so it's testing from Dallas. The page size is about 750 kilobytes, and the load time is just under a second, which is, which is again, decent. What you get here is an overview of what is taking the longest to load, what types of the processes take the longest to load, and you can easily drill down to see you know, why things take uh, long to load. Again, I, I'm fairly happy with the 994 milliseconds that that this takes to load. Although I would definitely get it uh, down further if I could. So you will um, no doubt notice a great speed increase and performance is vital not just for Google rankings but to for your customers to stay. So definitely check out W3 Total Cash and. Um, and see your site speed up. It's really not that difficult to configure when you know how. And again, it's definitely going to help your site out a lot. Thank you for tuning in to this tutorial. My name is, once again, Eric Burns-Gold. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.